question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Fisher. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Fair Work Ombudsman's inquiry into the wages and conditions of people working under the 417 Working Holiday Visa Program report commenced over two years ago and raises issues that the government has since taken strong action to address. Madam Deputy Speaker, allow me to remind the member of the positive improvements the government has already made. In 2015, the government made it illegal for people to pay for or employers to charge for a visa outcome. Established 417 visa holders who are seeking a second year visa also need to provide a payslip as proof that they are officially being paid before an additional visa is granted to them. In 2015, the government also established Task Force Sedina, through which the Fair Work Ombudsman and Australian Border Force can together investigate and address cases of migrant worker exploitation. Task Force Sedina is a joint agency task force comprising the Department of Immigration, Border Protection, its operational arm, the ABF, and the Workforce Ombudsman. Task Force Sedina also involves collaboration with other agencies such as the AFP, the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, the Australian Taxation Office, as well as local law enforcement agencies. Since its launch, Task Force Sedina has completed more than 11 operations, resulting in the, de in the detention of at least 95 unlawful non-citizens and the execution of more than 31 warrants. Some of these matters are ongoing with ABF Australian Border Force investigators preparing briefs of evidence for consideration by the Commonwealth DPP. People involved in the organisation of visa fraud and illegal work can face penalties of up to 20 years imprisonment or fines up to $100,000. People involved in the exploitation of foreign workers are liable for civil penalties of up to $10,800 per breach for a person or $54,000 for a corporation. The Turnbull government has made it clear on numerous occasions that attempts to exploit Australia's temporary visa programs will not be tolerated. The task force continues to gather intelligence across all industries where illegal work practices involving unlawful non-citizens and illegal foreign workers may be taking place. Its operations send a strong message to individuals and syndicates involved that if you are in Australia without a valid visa, you are working in breach of your visa conditions, or if you are exploiting foreign workers, you will be caught. We make no apologies for that, Madam Deputy Speaker. Ms. Madam Deputy Speaker, recently the government announced that employers of working holiday makers will be required to register with the Australian Taxation Office ensuring that government sees how people are being employed. The government also has a comprehensive plan to protect vulnerable workers, such as migrant workers. Well before the Leader of the Opposition was talking about this issue, the government had established a migrant worker task force to rectify instances of exploitation and announced new powers and funding for the Fair Work Ombudsman. Legislation to implement these commitments will be introduced early next year. In contrast, when in, when in government, Labor had no plan to protect vulnerable workers. In fact, when the Leader of the Opposition was the relevant minister, he slashed funding to the Fair Work Ombudsman by 17 per cent and cut Fair Work Ombudsman staffing by 20 per cent. Madam Deputy Speaker, in my region of the Sunshine Coast, backpacker Labor is key to the harvest of strawberries pineapples and other fruit and vegetables. Labor on temporary visas is also vital to the survival of the dairy, horticulture and fishing industries that would face the prospect of shutdown without it. The coalition government put forward a fully costed reform policy to reduce the tax rate for working holiday makers from a proposed 32.5 per cent to 19 per cent. The coalition's reform package had come after extensive consultation with industry, had been endorsed by the National Farmers Federation, was aimed at ensuring certainty for farmers so they could plan to hire backpackers over the picking season, ensured tax rates were internationally competitive and ensured fruits and vegetables were on the table at Christmas at the most affordable prices.